Hey, what's up? Glad that you are here. This is eighth part of Adaptive Widgets series. Previously, I have taught you to create adaptive scaffolds, adaptive list, adaptive bottom bar, and adaptive navigation. In this one, I will teach about adaptive buttons or you can say native buttons. Both the operating systems have their own design elements and they look different. We generally call them native elements. Flutter SDK has both material button and Cupertino button. Generally, in our apps, we use either of them. But what if you want to use material button in Android and Cupertino button in iOS? It's possible, but how do you do that? That's exactly you will learn in this video. Make sure you watch it till the end. And if you are new to my channel, support this channel by subscribing and liking the video. I have this app with the list of widgets. We have covered many of them before. So today we will see button. As of now on tap of button list item in both the applications, you can see an empty page. In the button screen, let's add adaptive button. Keeping the attributes to minimum, we can have on pressed and child as attributes. Now let's create adaptive button widget with these two attributes. Child will be one of the widget type and on pressed can be vo void callback type. In the build function, we can first check which platform the app is running on. If it's iOS, we will use Cupertino button, otherwise text button from material library. Text button is one type of material button. We will cover other later in this video. Similarly, we will also have fill type Cupertino button. On restarting the application, you can see native buttons respective to the platform. Okay, now let's see how many type of material buttons are there and their counterparts in Cupertino library. In material, buttons are of four types, filled, outline, text, and elevated. But in Cupertino, buttons are only of two types, text and filled. There is clear mismatch here. So in order to keep it in sync, we can use filled type for the unmatched ones. So I will be using filled button for elevated and outlined in iOS also. Let's get back to the code. I will create an enum adaptive button type and define four values for each button type. Then this type will come as an attribute from the caller. It's good to keep filled as default button type. Now, when it's iOS, using switch case, we will return Cupertino button when it's text type. For rest all the cases like filled, outlined and elevated, we will return Cupertino button dot filled type. Notice here that I have used latest Dart language feature where we can return from the switch statement. So next up, we will use switch in the else block as well for material. For fill type, we can use filled button. For outline type, we can use outline button. For text, we are already using text button. And for elevated, we will use elevated button. In the button screen, I have already added these four adaptive buttons with different adaptive button type. One last piece of information that I should be giving you is, I haven't utilized all the properties of these button widgets. So this is just the start. You can create native buttons or adaptive buttons with common properties like shape, alignment, disabled color, border color, and many more like these. For uncommon properties, you can still pass them in the adaptive widget, but either of the native buttons would use them instead of both. So that's a wrap from this video. I really hope you like this one and have learned something from this video. To support the channel, all you need is to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one.